Okay, good evening, everyone. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Today, our session, I think number eight, we'll speak today about the pumps. Our agenda for the day will speak about description of the pump, types of the pump, and some important information about pumps. To speak about pump arrangement and pumps piping studies and typical pump hookup. What is a pump? Description of the pump. What is a pump? Actually, basically, the pump is an equipment which used to transfer the fluid or to push the fluid. It used to push the fluid to increase the pressure. And actually, the pump, the movement of the pump is uh, is is working on different pressure or um, or the delta B or the difference between the pressure uh, and inside and outside. For example, I will give you an example. When you go to the coffee and you will order juice, you know the juice? I don't have juice, okay. <laughs> you order a juice, but you ask the guy for a straw, you know, straw to suck the juice. You will not. Uh, you will not drink from the bottle, you will use this uh, straw, like this in the photo. I will uh, use my annotation. You, you see this, this is bottle and this is a straw. What happened? You are making different pressure. You are doing with your mouth, you are sucking the juice, like this. By doing this, you are doing negative pressure inside your mouth and the pressure outside will be uh, more, will be, will, will be in plus and you will do negative inside your mouth. This negative pressure will allow the flow or the juice to enter your mouth by doing like this, like this. Using this straw by your mouth, you are doing or you are making different pressure. You are making what different in the pressure. Yes, seriously, you are doing this. You are doing different pressure. You are you are uh, making a vacuum inside your mouth or negative pressure, and then accordingly, therefore, the pressure outside it is the atmospheric, right? Then it will be it will be more than the flow will definitely in the, our industry, in the mechanical uh, engineering, there is a rule that says that the flow will transfer from the high pressure to the low pressure. Always, everywhere. Let, still, you have to have high pressure, then the flow can move from high pressure to low pressure. You have to have high pressure. So how you can do in the high pressure here? You are doing negative in your inside your mouth. So the atmospheric pressure, the normal pressure, will be high automatically. Then the flow will transfer immediately into your mouth. This is a typical arrangement also in the heart, inside our heart, in the, our, our body. The heart is working as this one. By doing this pulsation, the heart also is causing negative pressure and is pumping like this, negative pressure and pumping like this. This is uh, how the mechanism of pump operate, how it works, by causing different pressure, different pressure. Always in any pump, there is suction and discharge. There is a suction and there is a discharge. Suction is the way that you are sucking the flow enter the equipment or enter the pump. The discharge is the flow that is going outside. So typically the pump, this is the pump, is used to transport the fluid or to increase the pressure in the fluid system. All right. So if you decrease the pressure, as I said, in the process system, this is generally by doing what vacuum pump. If you are decreasing the pressure, then you are doing a vacuum pump. Okay. There is a typical arrangement for the pump. You have horizontal pump that is 
being installed horizontally. However, the prime uh, uh, chamber uh, for this pump is, is, is here. So the, the tank is plug ground. The tank is plug ground. The source of the flow is plug ground. Then the prime chamber is required to avoid any cavitation. We will explain what's mean by cavitation in the next slide. And this is a horizontal uh, arrangement. Or the tank can be above ground, like this photo. The tank is above ground, so the pump can suck immediately from the tank without any prime chamber. So if the tank is above ground, as you can see here in this photo, then the pump can suck immediately from the tank without any problem. Put in your mind, put it in your mind, the pump is an equipment it should suck liquid only. No gases is allowed. No vapor is allowed. So the pump is should suck liquid only. Again, the pump should suck and this is charged liquid only. No vapors, no gases. That's why this prime chamber is installed because if the pump is sucking here from the underground tank immediately, it may suck vapor. It may suck vapor, and this is will damage the pump. It will be damaged immediately. So that's why we are doing this arrangement if the tank is below ground. So however, if the tank is above ground, then it is no problem. The pump can suck the liquid without any issue, there will no be no vapor here. There is another arrangement if the pump is vertical, like the ESP that we studied in the drilling. I'm wondering if you are following me or you remember, you remember what we studied before or not. Anyway, in the ESP the, uh, that we called the, uh, the submerged pump or uh, uh, electrical submerged pump, ESP is it's the same arrangement, it is vertical, which is being put inside the drilling uh, uh, analogs so that it can what it can lift the flow out. So this is vertical pump. This is the arrangement of the vertical pump. All right. So what is the type of the pump? What is the type of the pump? We have different types of the pump. We have what we call it positive displacement pump, positive displacement pump, like uh, reciprocating with significant pulsation. Significant pulsation, this is like reciprocating pump. This is the same as uh, motor uh, internal combustion engine inside our vehicles or cars. We have positive also displacement, but it's rotating. This is without significant pulsation. We have the other type or other category of the pump is called impulse or dynamic pumps. And we have jet pump. Okay, the first type is a positive displacement pump, which is reciprocating pump that has significant pulsation. That has significant pulsation, like this one in the photo. This is a positive displacement type pumps that have piston and cylinder. This is a cylinder, and this is a piston, and this is the arm that is a rotary arm, or this is that can be rotated here, and the piston will go up and down. The piston will go up and down. If the piston will go up, then it will discharge the flow through this blue color area. When the piston will go down, it will suck the flow through this red color area or red color pipe. So it is sucking from the red when the piston will go down. When the piston will go up, it discharges the flow or the fluid through the blue color. So it is typically the piston displacement pump is, is piston and cylinder. It is a piston and cylinder. Why is it called significant pulsation? Because this rotation, when it is increased, then it causes pulsation like this. It will 
it will work like this pulsation so it is it is discharging the flow with the pulsation mood like this pulsation so this is why they call it with significant pulsation significant pulsation why are we using this type of uh, pump we are using these reciprocating pumps in the viscous fluid viscous fluid that's in, that's like heavy oils which is this very viscous uh, it is not a light so we it is heavy so we cannot uh, use other type of pumps we we need a heavy pumps like a piston uh, uh, piston pump which is uh, called reciprocating pump All right so there is a typical arrangement. This is a typical arrangement for the best with piston displacement. This is a piston pipe, the piston pump. Uh, sorry, the piston pipe. There is other types called plunger pump. Is also piston displacement, and there is a diaphragm pump. The plunger is the same as the piston displacement pump. However, this is a plunger type. However, this one is used for a small quantity of liquid at high pressure. So this is a blunder type. It is quick, it is really relevant to the piston displacement. However, if you can see here, the suction and discharge is they are not aligned. So here is this is a suction and this is a discharge. So this is a discharge area, and here is a suction area. They are not the same as the piston, but they are working also with the blunder, not a piston. There is no piston here, it is a blunder. This is blunder here and it will also pulsate the fluid. This is also different type from blunder types. You see here is this is a motion going like this and this is a suction discharge. That this is a discharge and this is a suction. It sucks the fluid from here because of this motion. All right. Then when the motion is coming back again, it discharge the fluid from this area. Okay. This is also another type or example of the blunder type. This is the blunder here. So if it is move, if it is move, this kind of area will open, so it will discharge. And this kind of area will uh, open will be discharged. When it return it back, it will suck. When it go back again like this, it will suck. So this it will open and this will be open. Then it will be sucking the fluid. And this is how it works at how, how it looks from inside. So this is a piston pump. It is different from the blunder because the piston is working with the crankshaft and this is a piston and they are within the cylinder. We can have different type, we can have three piston and cylinder. So this is one, two, three. We should not can it, it should not have only one, we can have more than one. Okay, the third type of the positive displacement or reciprocating pump is the diaphragm pump. Diaphragm pump. Instead of plunger or the piston, we have a diaphragm. This is a diaphragm. This is the one diaphragm. This one. This is a diaphragm will open and close. How to open and close with this motor? eccentric rotation if it is rotated then this arm will be rotated then this diaphragm will open and then again it will close if it is this diaphragm it will work like this so in case of uh, rotation it will be closed like this area so when it close like this area it will push it will push the flow to exit for this charge in the suction in the suction mood then the diaphragm will be in this flat area. It will be flat. Then it will suck the flow. Then it will suck the flow. So the suction, the diaphragm will be flat like this. It will suck the flow. And during this charge, the diaphragm will be declined like this one to discharge the flow. This is how it works. So like this area, this is the discharging. The diaphragm will be deflected like this one to discharge the flow. This is also another uh, animation of how it works during the discharge. This is uh, exhaust stroke. This is will 
therefrom will be deflect like this one, will deflect like this one, and then it will have the discharge here. This is another type also from diaphragm bumps, and here is the diaphragm in this area. So it will be have a rotation, and this is a suction and discharge here, suction and discharge. So it will be working like this kind of reciprocating process, reciprocating process. This is in the industry. This is a diaphragm. How it works? This is a diaphragm here. This is a one, the brown color, and this is a typical arrangement. Uh, and this is an installation of this one. Okay. The other uh, types of the post displacement, which is a rotating without significant pulsation, without a significant pulsation. So there is no kind of significant pulsation like this one. And but still it is uh, rotating, it is post displacement type. Still it is a post displacement type, but without significant pulsation. Like what? Like the gear type, the gear pump. This is a gear pump, and this is a typical arrangement for the gear pump. It's like uh, if you see yeah, here, if you look to this uh, photo, this is a gear bump. It's like two gear connected together, like here, two gear connected together. You know the gear, like this one. This is a gear arrangement. So this is a gear, and this is the flow will come from here. When the gear is rotating, then the flow will be in a uh, in very narrow area. So when the gear is continue rotation, then the flow will be compressed. This compression will pump the flow to the other area. So this is pumping section or discharge section, and this is a suction section. When the rotation of the gear is connection together with the tools, then it will it will have or it will reduce a suction pressure in this area. And when it continue a rotation, then it will compress the flow then it will go out from this area, like this. This is called boost of displacement, but without pulsation, because we don't have here a pulsation mood. We don't have a crank or shaft that's doing a pulsation mood. Instead, it is a rotation mood. It is a rotation mood. So this is also another uh, example of the uh, rotary piston machine or it is without any pulsation. This is also a rotary piston bomb. This is also a burst of displacement, but without pulsation. Another type of, of burst of displacement, but without pulsation, the warm bomb, which is concert of warm gear and warm shaft. This is a warm shaft and this is a warm gear. And this is how in the industry, both together will rotate and the flow also will come from this side and will be discharged from that side. The last type of the pumps, which is called impulse or dynamic pump. This is different type because the impulse or dynamic type, it is mainly like centrifugal pump or kinetic machine which converting the mechanical energy into hydraulic through centrifugal motion, centrifugal motion, like this centrifugal pump. This is a centrifugal pump, and this is called dynamic or kinetic because they transfer the mechanical motion into hydraulic, into hydraulic. So with the suction, through the suction, this is a suction shaft, it will go through the impeller, this is the impeller, and this is the impeller, it will push the impeller to rotate. The impeller will have a rotation because it is driven by motor, electrical motor. But when the impeller will rotate, it will, it will uh, produce a suction pressure, suction pressure. It will suck the flow, then it will have, because of the centrifugal uh, eccentric of force, it will discharge the flow from this diffuser or from this area. So this is how it works. Because of the centrifugal uh, force, the flow will discharge like here. So it will it will have 
uh, eccentric uh, uh, force to this charge of flow from this area because of the rotation to the discharge. And this is actually the centrifugal pump is common use in the oil and gas industry. We normally use a lot of type of centrifugal pump in the, in the oil and gas industry because it is available. Uh, it is uh, actually serves uh, uh, the purpose of the flow because of the pressure and pressure. So it is really mainly required or mainly used in the refinery movie. So as I told, the water is displaced outward and more water can enter the suction side of what will replace the displaced water. So how it works, the water hits the rotating impeller. So it hits here the rotating impeller and the energy of the impeller transfers the water. So this is the energy of the impeller to transfer the water to through the suction pressure and it will force it will force the water or the liquid through the discharge area through the charge area so it's called centrifugal force this force is called centrifugal force this is many types or many area of different type of centrifugal pump so this is a suction area from here this is a suction nozzle and this is a discharge nozzle so you can imagine inside what how it looks this is inside so this is typically what is inside here. This is a suction here. This is a suction, which is this one. So it will have the impeller, which is inside. It will be rotate very high rotation like this. It will be very high rotation. Then it will go to the discharge. So it will have very high rotation. It will transfer the movement uh, from kinetic to hydraulic. Then it will go from this area to the discharge. This is typical arrangement for the horizontal pump, centrifugal pump, and this is a typical arrangement for the vertical centrifugal pump. This is vertical centrifugal. This is also a vertical centrifugal pump. Another type also from the dynamic pump or kinetic pump, which is the axial pump. This is the axial pump. It is not like the centrifugal, but this is axial. Everything in the same ax area. That's why they call it axial bomb. So the suction and discharge from the same axial. This is called axial pump. And the can bomb, this is uh, another type of rotary or dynamic bomb, is called the can bomb. And this is uh, used uh, also in the industry, but Early, we use the can bomb. We are not to use can bomb uh, frequently in oil and gas industry. As I told you, we, we either use the centrifugal pump, the axial pump, or the positive displacement pump. Positive displacement reciprocating pump, it is also used in the oil and gas uh, industry. The last one is the jet pump. Jet pump is actually different from the normal pump because we are injecting, we are injecting something here. So either we inject gas, uh, uh, like steam, uh, we inject the fluid like water or air, and this injection actually will cause a vacuum, a vacuum as a suction nozzle. It will cause a vacuum. So this is a fluid under a pressure enter here. This is called vacuum. Vacuum means negative pressure. And if the vacuum happens, then the flow will transfer from the negative or vacuum pressure to the other area, it will be easily transferred or moved. So this jet pump has no moving part at all, only injection. And uh, this because of this injection that happens because of the negative pressure, then it will operate uh, automatically. The flow will transfer from the low vacuum pressure to the other area which has uh, higher pressure. This is an example of the jet pump. And as I told, we rarely use this jet pump in the oil and gas industry, but you, it is worthy to know the types. All right, so let's see a, a video about the type of pump. So, and we'll turn it back again to our uh, lecture.
pumps can be grouped into two general categories positive displacement pump and dynamic pump a positive displacement pump makes a fluid move by trapping a fixed amount of the fluid and forcing or displacing that trapped volume into a discharge so this is actually the categories of the pump either positive displacement or dynamic this is the main category either positive displacement or dynamic the then dynamic is the most common used in the oil and gas industry the mainly used is a centrifugal pump the most of displacement the main use of this one is the piston pump not this kind of gear this is this one that is shown in the screen it is a gear pump pipe or discharge system some positive displacement pumps use an expanding cavity on the suction side and are decreasing cavity on the discharge side Dynamic pumps impart velocity and pressure to the fluid as it moves past or through the pump impeller and subsequently convert some of that velocity into additional pressure. It's also called kinetic pumps. These pumps operate by developing a high liquid velocity and converting the velocity to pressure in a high diffusing flow passage. Types of positive displacement pump a positive displacement pump can be further classified according to the mechanism used to move the fluid. There are three types. Rotary types positive displacement and reciprocating type positive displacement and linear type positive displacement. Rotary type positive displacement. The nature of rotary pump requires very close clearance between the rotating pump and the outer edge. Making it rotate at a slow steady speed. If rotary pumps are operated at high speeds, the fluids cause erosion, which eventually causes enlarged clearance that liquid can pass through, which reduces efficiency. Rotary positive displacement pumps fall into three main types. Gear pumps. A gear pumps are simple type of rotary pump where the liquid is pushed between two gears. Screw pumps. Screw pumps are the shape of internal of this pump is usually two screws turning against each other to pump the liquid. Rotary vein pumps. These pumps are similar to scroll compressors. These have a cylindrical rotor encased in similarly shaped housing. As the rotor orbits, the vein trap fluid between the rotor and the casing joining and the fluid through the pump. Reciprocating type positive displacement pump. Reciprocating pumps move the fluid using one or more oscillating pistons, plungers or membranes, while valves restrict fluid motion to the desired direction. In order for suction to take place, the pump must first pull the plunger in an outward motion to decrease pressure in the chamber. Once the plunger pushes back, it will increase the pressure chamber and the inward pressure of the plunger will then open the discharge valve and release the fluid into the delivery pipe at a high velocity. Typical reciprocating pumps are plunger pumps. A reciprocating plunger pushes the fluid through one or two open valves, closed by suction on the way back. Diaphragm pumps. Similar to plunger pumps where the plunger pressurizes hydraulic oil which is used to flex a diaphragm in a pumping cylinder. Diaphragm bulbs are used to pump hazardous and toxic fluids. Piston pumps. Displacement pumps usually simple devices for pumping small amounts of liquid or gel manually. The common hand soap dispenser is such a pump. Dynamic pumps are one category of pumps under which there are several classes, two of which are centrifugal pumps and spatial pumps. Centrifugal pumps. A centrifugal pump is a rotating machine in which flow and pressure are generated dynamically. The energy changes occur by virtue of two main parts of the pump. The impeller of the volute or casing. The function of the casing is to collect the liquid discharged by the impeller and to convert some of the kinetic energy into pressure energy. Centrifugal pumps are subdivided into several categories. Axial flow pumps. Axial flow pumps are high flow, low pressure pumps which lift fluid in a direction parallel to the impeller shaft. Mixed flow pumps. Mixed flow pumps are medium flow, 
medium pressure pumps which push fluid out away from the pump shaft at an angle greater than 90 degree. Radial flow pumps. Radial flow pumps are high pressure low flow pumps which accelerate fluid along the impeller blades perpendicular to the shaft. Special pumps. There are also a number of special types of dynamic pumps which are defined by certain characteristics. Cantilever pumps. Cantilever pumps are centrifugal pumps with long cantilever design used in some pump application. Jet pumps. Jet pumps are kinetic pumps with an ejector attached at the discharge outlet, utilizing the Venturi effect and motive fluid to generate pumping pressure. Turbine pumps. Turbine pumps are centrifugal pumps that use pressure in combination with a rotary mechanism with numerous small impellers and vents to transfer energy to fluid. Okay, so this is quite about the type of pumps. So let's speak about some important information about the pump in general about the pump in general. The main focus here will speak about the centrifugal pump because as I told you, this is a centrifugal pump is the most common use in the oil and gas industry. So the centrifugal pumps, when I will return back again to the slide to remember to for you to remember the yes, this is a centrifugal pump. This is a common use in the oil and gas industry. And this is work with the rotation as you see here, this is a suction and because of the velocity and the kinetic energy it transferred through the pressure energy so the kinetic energy is transferred to pressure energy through this rotation and dynamic forces so this is a common use in the oil and gas industry and we either have horizontal type or vertical type so i want you now if you out from this session and remember that we are using center figure pump this is very good so again back to the slides what is the main important of the center figure pump the pressure and the pump selection normally when we use we need to focus in selecting the pump about the pressure what is the inlet pressure and what is the discharge pressure so to allow the designer and the engineer to select the best pump and the best diameter and the best size of the pump, we want to know what is the inlet pressure, what is the suction pressure. We need to know also what is the discharge, what is the pressure that I want to reach so that I can select the best pump that meets this kind of categorization. So the pump selection is working as i told you is the pressure and also should be reliable reliability this actually centrifugal pump is reliable pump it is workable so really that it is have malfunction or it's required maintenance as regular equipment there is a regular maintenance maybe every six months or every one year but it's it is hard it is hard machine it is reliable machine it is also a safe machine. This centrifugal pump, it is a safe pump. As long as you achieve that, there is no uh, vapor enter to the pump and you are ensured that the pump only suck liquid, so you are in the safe mood. This pump will operate safely without any problem. This pump also have a good sealing. Sealing means they are have this kind of mechanical part that is uh, avoid any leakage it will uh, avoid any leakage or sweeping so this ceiling actually this mechanical part uh, like gaskets or this kind of things that is avoid any leakage so cavitations as i told you during the pump selection we should ensure that we are sucking pressure with so a sucking pressure is will not be negative if it is negative maybe some vapor some vapor will enter to the pump which will cause cavitation and these cavitations uh, from the name cave it's like a bubbles inside the impellers inside the suction area which will be suddenly uh, pumped out 
and it will uh, destroy the impeller and it will damage the pump. So it is important to ensure that we are sucking liquid only to avoid this cavitation. So in the pump area, as I told, there is alignment, there is a peeling, there is a cavitation, there is a head in pillar ceiling, NBSHA, which is net positive suction head available. There is a pump curve suction head. This is all mechanical engineers you are working to know how they select the best pump. It is not really important for, for us to know exactly what this meaning, but we will go with high level what is really required for you to understand. For example, the pressure. The pressure, actually, as I told you, it is very important because the inlet pressure, if it is very low, if it is very low, it may cause negative pressure. And the centrifugal pump, if it is have a negative pressure, it may suck vapor, it may cause cavitation. And as I told, this cavitation is very, very, very issue to the centrifugal pump. It will damage the impeller. It will damage the pump. So the pressure, the inlet pressure, is the pressure required by the fluid to be conveyed from the original source to the pump and support the operation of the pump. This is the inlet pressure, basically. So this inlet pressure that is required by the fluid to we convey to the original source to the pump. So this pump uh, inlet pressure, it is from either the suction vessel close to the pump, or actually from from the pump uh, from a static height from the uh, from the tank to the pump. So this is can uh, cause the inlet pressure. I need to give you a photo. So. Uh, to understand what I mean. Yeah, like here. This is called inlet pressure. Inlet pressure in this uh, photo, in this uh, illustration, this is a pump. Imagine this is a centrifugal pump. And the centrifugal pump is required inlet pressure. So this is actually the the level between the center line of the pump and the top of the tank, this is all out liquid here. It's called static pressure. So this is static pressure is good enough to uh, give me a very good inlet pressure. What I mean, I need to say that there is, there is a volume already have a static pressure, have a potential because of the head, because of the elevation here. This is actually helped me. This is good point that it helped me to have very good inlet pressure to the pump without what? Without causing any vapor. So it will not have any vapor. However, here, for instance, this area, I have here, I don't have this tank, but I am trying to suck it immediately from the tank which is underground. I don't have here inlet pressure sufficient. I may suck vapor because the tank is below ground and I don't have a static head above the ground. I don't have head above the level of the ground. So to have the water from under the ground, it may cause to have a vapor, a vapor. And this is very poor problem. Here, the inlet pressure for this pump is a problem. Without intermediate pump, uh, sorry, intermediate tank, here, it will be a very problem. I have to have intermediate tank full of water or full of liquid so that I can use it to increase the inlet pressure. Why I need to increase the inlet pressure? To avoid any vapor or any gases going to the pump. Why we need to avoid gases? Because it will cause cavitation, cavitation or bubbles. And this is will damage the impeller. Okay. This is the impeller. Uh, I need to give you a photo. What is the impeller? Yeah, this is the impeller. This is the impeller. This is the rotary. The rotary uh, fans is called impeller. If there any vapor going inside the impeller, 
it will cause cavitation and it will damage the impeller. It will damage the impeller. So the inlet pressure is very important so that I can ensure that I have enough, enough pressure uh, of fluid without vapor, without vapor. So what is the outlet pressure? The discharge pressure, which is the pressure that exits the flow, which is going outside the pump, which is required to the flow for delivery point until I reach to the destination. As I told you, I need to reach from point A to point B. So point A is the start point, point B is the destination. So this is the pressure at point B. What is the pressure required for the flow to go from point A to point B? This is the required discharge pressure. And this is the pressure that's required the pump to operate on. So I can select the pump on the discharge pressure that's allow me to move from point A to point B. This point B is the destination. So the discharge pressure, as I told, it can uh, be selected uh, easily uh, from hydraulic calculation. We know from the pipe and from uh, all the fitting and all this one, we can, the process chemical engineers, they can calculate this one through hydraulic simulation model they used in the engineering company to know exactly what is the losses and what is the final pressure that they will reach, then they will go backward to select the bomb based on this one. Okay. So the pump selection is actually the responsibility of the process and the mechanical engineer. Mechanical engineer, he is working in, in the area called rotary department. They are both responsible to select the pump based on the process requirement and physical properties of the fluid, viscosity and corrosion, and if actually the fluid is toxic or flammable and all of this, and also pressure and temperature. All of these parameters, it is giving them, the process and mechanical engineer, the overall idea to select the best pump. Okay, we spoke about the reliability that the pump should be operated continuously without any uh, uh, shut down, I mean the pump maybe have malfunction, so because of the maintenance. So the reliability is really required and the common, most common use in the oil and gas industry is the center, center figure pump, which is actually more reliable in the working in the oil and gas industry. Uh, so the, the operator or the operation, they can actually have some pump as a spare. So they normally install in the, in the field, in the site, uh, one operating pump and one spare or stand bump uh, pump. This is spare or stand bump, uh, bump. It will be uh, all the time uh, off, not open, not operated. But in case of malfunction or in case of maintenance, this standby pump will be operated, will be operated. Also the safety, as we spoke before, that the safety is very important. We should ensure that we are sucking uh, uh, liquid, not vapor. We are also we should ensure that we are using the best pump uh, for the best fluid. The fluid is not toxic. If the fluid is toxic, so we have to use the best selection of the pump to avoid any leakage, to avoid any issue inside the field. So we don't have any issue with the operators. The sealing also, the type of the seals, it's very important to avoid any leakage. It is also related to the safety. If you have a leakage, then there is no safety here. Safety means that you are ensured that the area around the pump is, there is no leakage, there is no drop, droplets from the pump, there is no liquid, it is actually hydrocarbon, it is very flammable, it is very dangerous. In case of uh, any source of ignition, it will explode, it will have a fire. So you should ensure that you don't have any kind of leakage around the area of the pump 
You should ensure that you have a proper ceiling. This is ensuring the safety and environmental as well. Erosion also, the erosion is like any dirt or sand or solids or little parts that can damage the rotary, uh, uh, rotary part of the pump. This is called erosion, can damage the pump. Leakage, as we spoke, is related to the ceiling, but the opposite. Leakage here is very dangerous. We don't want to have a leakage. Leakage will be a serious issue. It will cause uh, uh, maybe fire. It will cause uh, explosion. It will, if uh, the fluid is toxic, it will be a danger. So we should have any leakage, any kind of leakage at all. It should be sealed from all parts. And this is the cavitation that we spoke about. That. Uh, it is very important that the fluid should enter the bomb is very is liquid. So the cavitation actually is 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 being uh, uh, happened because of uh, sucking a vapor, and actually the pump uh, it will damage it will stop because of the acceleration actually of the uh, fluid inside this rotary machine center of the pump, uh, machine. It may cause some negative pressure, and this negative pressure will allow the flow to be a vapor, and this is will cause damage to the impeller, as we spoke about. So we should ensure that we don't have this kind of negative pressure in the section, in the section that enter to the pump. We should ensure that we don't have net booster section or negative pump section. This is very important that we don't have a negative section. That means that uh, the pump that's going inside the impeller or the pressure is, is positive, is not a negative pressure. So if cavitation happens, this is will damage the impeller, as you can see here, cavitation damaging the valve fluid, the cavitation here damaging the impeller. This is also cavitation also damage the impeller. This is very important in the oil and gas industry because if the impeller is damaged, the pump is totally damaged and it will be out of service. It will stop the work and all the oil and gas process will stop. And maybe the plant will have shut down and we will have a serious issue inside the plant. So we should ensure that we should, have, we should not avoid this kind of cavitation inside the pump. Okay. So there is another terminology. We know the impeller. The impeller is a part of the pump that is connected to the shaft. We know the mechanical ceiling that is, is required to avoid any leakage. We know the repulsive suction head that we spoke about. It is actually means uh, atmospheric pressure plus the cage pressure minus the vapor pressure minus friction loss. Uh, so this is in the suction pump. So this is all called the net positive suction head available. This is to prevent the cavitation to the pump. Okay, we have suction head we spoke about. If we have a tank, so this is tank is working as a suction head or static head. So this is the head actually, this is the head that of the tank, the level actually of the water inside the tank is called the head. And the bump curve is a diagram that it shows the flow uh, versus the pressure. And this is actually give the mechanical engineers the best selection of the pump based on the pressure and the flow requirement. So uh, be before we go to the bomb arrangement, so let's have one video. It will show you uh, some important notes about the pump maintenance and how they work with the pump. Installation and Operation Manual for Horizontal Split Case Pump This manual covers the installation and operation of Syntec Make Horizontal Split Case Centrifugal Pumps. When properly installed 
and when given reasonable care and maintenance. Centrifugal pumps should operate satisfactorily for a long period of time. The actually split casing design allows removal of the impeller and bearing housing assembly without disturbing suction and discharge piping. Storage and Protection All pumps are shop tested and ready for operation when delivered. If equipment is to be stored for long periods of time, 6 months or more should be kept in a clean, dry area and the following precautions should be taken to ensure that the equipment remains in good condition. Be sure that the bearings are fully lubricated. The shaft should be rotated 10 to 15 revolutions by hand periodically in order to spread the lubricant over all the bearing surfaces. Suitable intervals are from 1 to 3 months. Installation The pump should be located as close as possible to the liquid supply so that the suction line is short and direct. Location should require a minimum of elbows and fittings in the discharge line. Before installing the pump, ensure that the foundation on which the pump will be placed is prepared well. It has to be sufficiently substantial enough to take the weight of the pump and absorb any possible vibrations from it. The foundation has to be absolutely straight without any inclination or tilting on any side. The foundation bolt of proper size should be embedded in the concrete and base plate tightened, ensuring that it is level in all directions. Piping associated with the pump must be anchored and supported independently of the pump and should never put any strain on the pump casing. When the pipes are not supported, the weight is borne by the pump casing and may cause them to crack or deflect. It is important that the connections be carefully aligned axially, angularly and in length. Suction piping in case of static suction lift condition, negative suction. The piping run and the connection fittings should be properly aligned and supported separately. The elbow should be of long radius type. All suction piping must be airtight. The suction pipe should be sized to ensure the liquid velocity of not more than 2 meters per second. All suction pipes should have a continuous rise to the pump suction inlet. 6 mm per 100 mm slope is recommended. The recommended suction pipe size should be at least one commercial size larger than opening of the pump inlet. No isolation valve is recommended. So if you see here from this video, I want you to be notice something here. She, she pick up about the uh, inclination or slope. Yes, here. Recommend slope 6 mm to, uh, to 10 mm or 100 mm. What's, what, what that means? That means that the, the level between this area to this area is different. There is a slope, there is a declination. And why they are recommended? It is recommended, it is not mandatory, it is recommended. This is for the suction line, really. Suction line, the line that's going to the pump. It is recommended, why? Because it is very important to ensure there is no gases or vapor enter to the pump. So by ensuring this declination, it is give us very uh, or, or, or most probably idea or confirmation or assurance that there is no gases and all are liquid. So because of this declination, okay, and that's why also this kind of very uh, eccentric reducer is has top flat. That also ensures there is no vapor going inside the pump. It is all liquid. This is the purpose. 100 mm slope is recommended. The recommended suction pipe size should be at least one commercial size larger than opening of the pump inlet. No isolation valve is recommended. 
there should be a tapping provided for installing a vacuum gauge in suction line. The reducer joining the straight length of the pipe in the pump line should be an eccentric reducer with the inclined side of the reducer as the bottom side. The straight length of the pipe after the eccentric reducer should be two times of the pipe diameter. The suction strainer must be at least four times the suction pipe area and the mesh sides should screen out solid pipe. What that means suction strainer? This is actually is important, is a component, it's like a filter. It's like a, a, a mesh machine that is uh, that is prevent any solids or any kind of uh, rubbish or any uh, any other material or any other component to enter to the pump. It's like a screening to screen the the uh, the fluid that is, we ensure that is what is inside going inside the pump is only flow is only liquid without any rubbish without any particles without any uh, solids any kind of things it will damage the impeller because as you know the impeller will have very high motion and if any kind of dust or any kind of rubbish or any kind of solids or particles if it just go to the impeller with very high motion it will damage the impeller so this is suction strainer it will have a screening like a filter that prevent all of this rubbish or all sorry all of these particles to enter to the impeller particles that could clog the impeller. The minimum depth of submerges of the strainer should be at least four times the pipe diameter measured from upper row of holes of strainer. The distance between the bottom of strainer and the floor of the tank should be considered as two times of pipe diameters. A stream of liquid falling into the pump near the intake pipe will turn air into the liquid. The supply line should extend down into the liquid. A short elbow should never to bolt directly to the pump's suction nozzle. The disturbance in the flow caused by the sharp bend so near the pump inlet may result in noisy operation, loss in efficiency and capacity and heavy end thrust. If separate suction lines cannot be used for each pump, then a tapering header with Y branches should be used. A straight branch header should never be used. Suction piping in case of flooded suction condition. Positive suction. In case the water is being supplied to the suction through gravity, example, an overhead tap. A slightly different setup is needed. The elbow should be of standard type or of the long radius type. Isolation valve should be provided in suction line. The pipe supplying from the tank into the pump should have a descending inclination. The straight run of the piping leading to the pump suction nozzle should be at least three times to six times the diameter of the pipe from the upstream elbow. The suction pipe should be sized to ensure a liquid velocity of not more than three meters per second. There should be a tapping provided for installing a pressure gauge in suction line. The reducer joining the straight length of the pipe in the pump line should be an eccentric reducer with the inclined side of the reducer as the top side. Stuffing box seal connections are usually made from the top of the pump casing. If the liquid being pumped is unsuitable for sealing, then it is preferable to bring fresh, cool water to seal connections from an outside source. Centrifugal separators or other filters may be used to remove abrasive particles from the liquid being pumped if an outside source is not available. Description of the discharge pipe The piping run and the connection fittings should be properly aligned and supported separately reduce strain on the pump casing. There should be a pressure tapping as close to the pump outlet 
and before the isolation valve as possible to measure the pump shutoff head. Concentric reducers are installed in the discharge pipe to minimize friction losses. The check valve used in the discharge should be of non-slam type to prevent reverse flow and protects the pump from excessive back pressure. The isolation valve is provided downstream of the check valve so that these can be taken up for maintenance, priming and starting whenever required. The recommended discharge pipe size should be at least one commercial size larger than the opening of the pump outlet. The number of fittings and size changes should be minimum to prevent fluid friction losses. Expansion joints may be used only after a careful piping analysis, especially when the discharge pressures are on the higher side. Installation of Pump and Prime Mover The pump and motor unit needs to be fitted firmly onto the base frame using nuts and bolts before fitting in any pipes. It is essential to confirm the distance between the shaft ends. In the subsequent step, the pump and motor are aligned to the final tolerance using a reverse dial gauge or a laser alignment tool. After the alignment is completed, the piping associated with pump should be bolted. Once this is completed, the alignment should be rechecked and similar readings should be obtained. If this is not the case, then the piping should be investigated and suitable corrections should be made. If this is left unattended, it can cause stress on the pump casing. Misalignment may be the cause of noisy pump operation, vibration, premature bearing failure or excessive coupling wear. Once the pump and motor have been coupled, test the movement manually by rotating it by hand to see if it is rotating smoothly. Operation Before bolting the coupling halves together, check the drive rotation to see that it matches the pump rotation. Starting When possible, turn the pump shaft by hand to ensure that the parts do not bind. Check the bearing lubricant. Open the valve in the pump suction line if fitted. Close discharge valve. Prime the pump. Open valves in stuffing box C lines if fitted. Start driver. Open discharge valve slowly when the pump is up to speed. Adjust the packing gland until there is a slight leakage from the stuffing box. Mechanical seals need no adjustment. There should be no leakage. Shut down. The pump may be stopped with the discharge valve open without causing damage. However, in order to prevent water hammer effects, the discharge valve should be closed first. Close discharge valve. Stop driver. Close water seal valves. Close valve in the pump suction line if fitted. If danger of freezing exists, drain the pump completely. For further information, you can email your queries to us on. Okay, thank you. So I think this is good enough to know more about uh, pump installation and uh, pump uh, startup and shutdown as well. So quickly we'll go through pump arrangement before we close our session today. Actually, the pump arrangement is merely how you are locating the pump inside the field, inside the plant. And it is very important to locate the bomb as close as possible to the tank or to the equipment that is, is suction, suck, uh, it has a bomb uh, suction from it to avoid any losses. 
and this is for hydro uh, for the hydraulic calculation is very important the pump should be as close as possible to the source of the flow that is sucking the fluid from which is mainly tanks for example or most common it is tanks so uh, the pump arrangement so uh, it is very important as i told that the pump should be very close to the equipment and uh, should be under uh, uh, in the ground should not be uh, we should not ever never never put the pump on a structure it should be always on the ground because it's required maintenance it's re it is by it is has a noisy it has a vibration it is a rotary machine we never ever put the pump on a on a on a structure it should always be on the ground on a foundation so this is a typical arrangement for the pump here we are putting the pump on the ground as i told you this is a pump here and the pump is has a maintenance zone it's required to have a maintenance zone and this maintenance zone is should be uh, open for the pump for easy truck or easy crane that can access the pump the motor or pump driver for any maintenance requirement so we should have uh, we should have this area open we should not block this area by any kind, uh, kind of piping or equipment so we should allow this for maintenance people so the typical hookup for the bomb if it is a horizontal we normally using this pipe arrangement in the horizontal for the suction and the char this is to save pipe and to minimize the fitting and the elbows and the kind of uh, uh, fitting inside uh, the area. So this is typical arrangement. For the discharge, we normally put the chip valve. This is a chip valve is uh, is basically non-return valve. It doesn't allow the flow to return it back to the pump. So it's only allow one way pass to the flow. If in case the pressure is have back pressure or the pressure is allows the discharge to go back inside the pump, then this uh, valve, non-return valve, will stop this uh, mechanism. It will not allow the pressure or the flow to enter the pump again. And this is a strainer, as you can see here. This is required inside the suction. This is a suction line. And this is a strainer that is doesn't allow any particles or solid to enter to the pump this is a strainer how it looks and we have a valve a shutdown valve in the suction line and we have also another shutdown valve in the discharge line this is vertical uh, hookup this is also another typical vertical hookup but this is for the large pipe here we have a small piping. We have here large piping, which is have a bigger diameter. We can have the discharge horizontal, then we can go up with the vertical with the shutdown valve. Another also typical hookup here for the vertical, for the bigger sizes, you can have the horizontal arrangement for the piping. Uh, it will be like this because because if you increase the uh, diameter then definitely uh, you will need to have a bigger size of the elbow or fitting that's why you need to have this kind of horizontal arrangement in case of the horizontal bump this is also one of the typical hookup arrangement for the horizontal bump for the suction and discharge. This is a suction line going like this, and this is a discharge line will go like this. This is for the small sizes. If we have bigger sizes, we can have the discharge decline like this one. This is for, uh, for the bigger size to allow for uh, spacing and to avoid losses in the discharge line and to have minimum fitting for the discharge line. Fitting means this uh, flanges and eccentric reducer and elbows and valves and other elbows. This all consider fitting. This is also another typical arrangement for the horizontal pump for the large piping. 
for the large size. For the bigger and high sizes, we have another also arrangement recommended, and we can put the check valve and the shutdown valve here on the structure. So they can be on the platform for easy accessibility because the diameter is increased and the size increased, so it cannot be accessible from the ground. So in case the operator, he want to close the valve, he cannot operate from the ground. So he, we want to put it on the platform. So for easy accessibility. This is also another uh, arrangement for the uh, typical bubble suction uh, bump hookup. Here, another arrangement for the typical bubble suction bump hookups. This is also for the top suction bump hookup. If it is from the top, how it can be arranged. This is also from the horizontal pump. If we need to go from the top side, not from the, from the side side. So uh, this is mainly uh, piping engineers. They are doing this in the, pipe, in the oil and gas industry. They are working on this one. So today we explain mainly the pumps. We explain the major uh, common use in the oil and gas, which is the central fuel pump. We go through, we go through the pump selection and the pump arrangement. And we uh, understand there is many types of pumps. And we understand that it's the pump location is very important. It should be close to the source of the fluid or the source of the tank, which is sucking flow from. We also understand there is some engineers, they are working in the oil and gas industry. They are starting with from process engineer, mechanical engineer, piping engineer. All of them are working together to ensure that this pump is working properly and is designed properly and selected properly as per the requirement and as per uh, the specification. So uh, we finish the browsers. And sister, if you have any questions so far, please let me know. Uh, today, our session is really important to understand the industry more deeply and to go through uh, the pump is actually the heart of the industry. It is really the heart of the industry. If the plant uh, doesn't have pump, so this plant is shut down. It is not working. It's the same as the human being. If the man or woman or mankind is without a heart, he will he will die. So the importance of the plant that has pump, like the importance of the mankind that he has a heart. Without heart, he will he will stop moving. He will not uh, uh, be alive. The same for the plant. If the plant doesn't have pump, it will not operate it will be shut down. So there is no plan, there is no operation, there is no oil and gas, there is no fluid, there is nothing. If there is no pump, there is no fluid, there is no oil and gas. There is no market, there is no transfer to any area, there is no gas station, nothing without pumps. Pumps are very, very, very important in oil and gas industry. Okay, brothers. So I will open the mics for you. If you have any questions, please let me know. Stop the recording.